Hi, Neil. Good morning. I thought we'd talk about something different today. I know you've had a great career within the industry, and I thought we could talk about things that have changed over time. Absolutely. Happy to do that. Um, you know, I grew up in the fastener industry. Um, we've been in the in this business uh, over 61 years. Uh, wow. And I've been in it ever since I've been a little kid. So uh, I remember when I was seven or eight, uh, my father used to take me around to his customers on Saturdays and he would take, you know, orders from them and I, he would introduce me as his bodyguard, of course. <laughs> and that's as early as I started in this industry. Um, and from there, you know, I just grew up in it. I, I started in the packing room and um, moved to putting stock away um, and then into pulling orders and waiting on customers and then uh, eventually as a, uh, I went to, away to college when I came back. I went on the road for the company and wow. uh, was brought back in pretty much uh, in charge of sales and marketing. Yeah. And this is when the operation was in Boston on Albany Street, correct? It is correct, yeah. We were in a warehouse, big warehouse building. Um, we were on two floors of 20,000 square feet. Um, and there was a, a, the building was a big old mill building and we had the whole si side of, uh, one of the sides of the building painted by a local sign company on scaffolding and that painted the whole building, you know, Allied Bolt and Screw. Well, that's great. And uh, it was, everybody knew it as the Allied Bolt and Screw building back then. So you really went to college and came back. What was your interest? What really made it work for you? Because you were just so familiar? Um, you know, I, I went away to, to UMass in the Amherst, um, but I, I basically, you know, worked so much through the years in, in the company and had such a, a great relationship with my father that mm. when I was old enough actually to go away to college and halfway through, I knew you know, that I was gonna come into the business. I wanted to come into the business, I, I, I knew it, and um, I knew the industry to a degree, uh, I wanted, and I wanted to work with my father. So, That's great, yeah. great time with your father, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so. Give me some tidbits of what's changed over time. Uh, gosh. Um, There's probably many. Yeah. You know, there are so many things. I mean, I could touch base on a, on a few things. Uh, certainly, the industry has matured tremendously um, since, um, you know, since I started in it. Uh, back in those days... Um, most of the screws were packaged in grosses. For some reason, I'm not quite sure, but almost all the screws that we had um, were packaged 144 pieces, it was. And then at some point, the industry decided, well, we're gonna stop doing that. We're gonna package everything in hundreds. So things get switched over to 100 pack. There was a bit of a, a rub in the industry mm -hmm. because when you reduce your your package size by a third, your gross profit decreases by a third. <laughs> um, but that was, it was done. And um, these other things, uh, I remember, for instance, carriage bolts were always packaged with nuts. Whenever you bought a box of carriage bolts, it came with a nut. But the thought was in the industry, A, it takes double the labor to to pack it, pack the box, and you could reduce the selling price, or not, by taking the nuts out and selling. You know, Interesting. Casual, yeah. Yeah. Um, machine screws too. I mean, you couldn't just buy a machine screw because they were sold as stove bolts, and a stove bolt basically is just a, a round. It was basically a round head slotted machine screw with a nut packed in the same box, and they called it a stove bolt. Mm. Um, but once again, through 
um, maturation. Uh, they took the nuts out and called them, you know, machine screws. Right. And didn't they kind of package things a little differently, like with rubber bands or with newspaper? Or... <laughs> so you must have seen pictures, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, a few things. I, I do remember sometimes bolts would come in wrapped in newspaper mm. with string around it. Um, and... These items would come to us, this is industry-wide, industry packed in wooden crates, either a rectangular wooden crate or a round wooden crate with metal strapping around it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very difficult to handle, but... Um, and didn't that add to the weight of the shipping? I mean... Well, I don't kind of think... That was an know. issue back then. It was just how the, the industry worked. Right. Uh, eventually, those wooden kegs got became e antiquated, mm -hmm. and they started shipping in metal cans. Mm -hmm. And now, today, for the most part, uh, you know, ninety percent of the product that comes in is packed in corrugated boxes. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Differences. Yeah. yeah. Um. I do, you know, I've mentioned this before that our inventory back then was, for the most part, for screws was slotted. All the head style was slotted. Well, the, there were very few Phillips drive screws in the mentality mm. um, back then. And, and it's amazing how things have transitioned, you know, over the past 50 or 60 years. Um, was that the homeowner didn't have a Phillips screwdriver, so... They figured the you know they need they were uh, targeting the consumer rather than the commercial industries. Now of course uh, our business is really geared to commercial, and um, from that standpoint, you know very very few slotted screws are ever ever sold. Wow, wow! I can't imagine not having a Phillips. <laughs> you know, I think yeah. it's like the little are big things. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, that's fascinating. I, you know, they back then too. Um, for a steel fastener that um, today, you know, it's either steel or stainless or brass or bronze, or whatever. They never refer to anything as steel. It was always called iron. <laughs> And oh. yeah, oh. Uh, um, even though it, it was steel, it was steel, but they refer to it as iron. Okay, um, and today a lot of the fasteners that you see are zinc plated, mm -hmm. and back then, um, they there was a term they called bright, but you would think bright was shiny, but mm. in reality, back then, bright meant plain steel. Oh, yeah. yeah. So just wow. crazy things. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, the maturity. It really has changed. Yeah. 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 Anything uh, else that stands out? Um, well, uh, even to this day, I mean, with set screws, socket head set screws, mm -hmm. um, people refer to them as Allen set screws or Allen keys, mm -hmm. which is the hex key to turn the set screw. But back in, oh, in 1910 or so, um, there was a fellow with the last name Allen that, that um, invented the set screw. Yeah. And so it was known as the Allen set screw and the Allen key. Or the Allen wrench. The Allen right. wrench. Right? Yeah, which we know today. It yeah. just carried on. Yeah. And once again, back in those days, they when you bought a box of socket set screws or round set screws there was a hex key inside the box oh they always they included it yeah um sign of the times yeah, yeah. um there was, there was so many i mean so many changes even with lag bolts on the bottom of a box of lag bolts it would always say gimlet point uh i mean today you wouldn't say with a hex bolt you know um straight Point or something, right? Um, but they differentiated with a bolt, 
uh, of a, a lag bowl, had to, they had to say gimlet point so you, the buyer would know that it had a point to it. Right. Um, and so back in those, depending who packaged the box, it could say a lag screw, it could say a lag bolt. They hadn't quite come to terms with what it really was. So okay. it was all it was always it was the same thing, but mm -hmm. sometimes referred to by two different names. Yes. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. So oh, that's good. Yeah, things have things have changed uh, quite quite a bit. Um and I do remember too when my father first started his business, he was very, very young. Um, he and my mom lived in Boston, and he, they used to bring screws home, and he told the story, and they would um, package their own screws at home oh. to bring them to, back to the work the next day, yeah. um, and they would package screws on their dining room table, the dining room table at the time being an ironing board. Yeah, oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's great, Neil. Well, thanks so much. I think it's always good to look at the industry and look at the things that have changed. And I know you have many, many more stories. Yeah, it's been a... I've been in it for quite a while. Um, and for the most part, all, all good stories. Uh, yeah. It's a it's an amazing industry and... Um, I enjoy the challenge. Yeah, and it certainly makes a good business. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, Neil. Thanks.